Hi everybody, welcome to the podcast episode 19. So I'm in a different space today, um, which is actually, this was the place that I recorded the very first podca- podcast episode, I think. Um, so yeah, it just so happens to be back at the time of year where it's sunny enough to be in here again because it's usually a really dark room, but there's a window right above me, so that's good. <laughs> So yeah, it's nice to be back. I took a little break last week um, just because I was coming up with some new colours and playing around in the dye studio. So I worked last Friday instead of doing a podcast. Um, I normally do the podcast on my day off. So So I have, saying as it's been two weeks and I have had a little bit of extra time, completed I have two finished objects. Can you actually believe that? I don't know if I've ever had two finished objects on the podcast before. (laughs) So, um, yeah, the first one is my Pinguono, um, which, well, I still have to weave in the ends, but yes, the naturally dyed limited edition Pinguono. So I'll just insert a little clip so you can see what it looks like the whole way around. Um, so the first time I tried this on, well, it must have been uh, when I finished most of the body and when I finished the sleeve. So I put it on and I stood up and I was like, oh, the sleeves look like too, I don't know, they don't sit very well. Like when my arm's down, they look nice when it's up, but maybe not when it's down. Um, after a while, I just got over that um, and I am very pleased with it. So it's my, so this is all of my different limited edition bases, not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, Cheviot, my Cheviot Ford Ply, my new base, the Dorset, um, the Teeswater and South Down, uh, what else? The Cumbrian, and yeah. So I used all of these yarns in this, held with a strand of Whistlebear's we ring bell, which I love. So yeah, I'll chat. I'll chat to you a little bit about this. So this was my first Stephen West pattern that I knitted. Um, it was easy but interesting. So I would say that um, because you're like picking up stitches and knitting in all different directions, that keeps it interesting without it like requiring too much like thought. Um, because it's all garter obviously and it's all about the colours and changing colours and um, kind of mixing it up with the colours so I really enjoyed that aspect of it because I love putting colours together and that's why it's my job to be a dyer. (laughs) Um, So yeah and I particularly enjoyed the I-cord bind off Um, the last bind off, the bind off because it's one massive bind off the whole way around the shawl. It must have been about five or six hundred stitches or something. I don't know how many stitches it was, but it was a lot. But I really enjoyed it and I love the effect that it gives. Just really neat and it looks really nicely finished. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And yeah, it was just interesting to knit something by Stephen West. It was so completely different to other things that I've knitted. Um, and I think this will be the perfect thing to wear in the winter in this house. It's so cold. So I will really enjoy wearing it in the winter around the house, just with like potentially another jumper below because it's so cold. Um, but yeah, and it's just like wearing a blanket. So that's pretty cool because as I said, this house is not warm. Um, so yes finished that I actually whizzed through this this was I knit this very fast for me and I rather enjoyed the experience let's get a wee top up here um I'm drinking today uh, Suki tea my favorite tea Northern Irish tea brand um, and I'm having their Earl Grey blue flower and it's in a nice Jean Follett ceramics mug she is a ceramicist um, uh, from England 
and I originally seen her ceramics at Greenbelt Festival. Um, so yeah, I this is one of my favourite mugs. I am a hoarder of ceramics. I mean, I don't buy loads, but like, I'm very precious with them. Kind of. I mean, I put them in the dishwasher, but I'm always really sad when one breaks, <laughs> which it inevitably does, but you can always buy another one. I love the shape and size of this mug though. So yeah, that was my first finished object. I think the bind off probably took me like three hours. Probably more actually. <laughs> I did it all yesterday. Still loads of ends to weave in and oh yeah, one thing I wanted to mention about it was um, on the back here, it's gone a little bit weird. So it kind of looks as if I picked up too many stitches, but I don't think I did. So I don't know why it's gone like a little skirt like that. And also one more thing that I want to do with it is put two big buttons, two big wooden toggles and like a little eye cord and sew the eye cord on. Because I don't know if I want it flapping around because that's not very practical, is it? So did anyone else ever do that with this design? Well, I'll probably just give it a go and see, see what it's like. So yeah, so that's pretty much everything about this that I think I would want to say. Um, it's quite fun. Um, it used I used four skeins actually of the Whistle Bear. I carried it throughout. Um, and of my yarn, I can't say because I just had it caked up. It's just random cakes that I had more of, less of. So I just kind of yeah, I don't know how much it used of my yarn, but probably, yeah, similar, like four skeins or something in total. So, yeah. So the next finished object, which I'm very excited to show you because I was through this as well, is my Snuggle Down Coil. And the pattern is by So Sweet Violet. And I used my Cherry Blossom uh, mini skein set. So I think it turned out pretty well. Like these colours here are quite similar. So it's not big as you can't see such a big difference. You can see a gradient in real life, but it's not as extreme as from this to this. But I kind of like that look. Um, and whenever I was knitting it, I was thinking, oh, this would look really good in my spring minis, which I have a few of left. So I might take one for myself and knit one in my more springy colours and maybe give it to someone for Christmas, potentially. So this pattern is just so lovely and relaxing and it's not taxing at all. And it's just really, it's just nice. It's a nice pattern and um, it's really snuggly when you put it on. Like, like it'll be so nice in the winter. And if you're really stuck, um, you could do this, which I, does <laughs> this look crazy? It's kind of like a balaclava type thing. I always in the winter, <laughs> I always dream of um, a balaclava because sometimes it gets so cold, but you can't really <laughs> wear a balaclava in Northern Ireland. Um, but this would be acceptable, I think. You just pull it up over your head because some of my coats don't have a hood, so you could totally do this. I mean, you could get away with it anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, so really enjoyed that knit. That was just lovely. Um, what have I got next? Oh, my socks. Yes, my Rita socks. Well, I haven't done a whole pile on them. But, um, and now I've figured out how to say um, the pottery that makes these progress keepers called Buclivy pottery. Um, I think I've only knitted about eight rounds in this since because I've been working on this and this so much. Um, but yeah, the pattern is by Little Bobbins and I am knitting this in my walled garden colourway, which is, I think I came up with it last year. Actually, it looks quite different in the skein than it does knitted up. So this is what it looks like in the skein. 
obviously these are different dye lots and you can kind of see the wee bits of purple through it but yeah I'm gonna have some of this in the next shop update because um I thought you might like it now that I can show you what it's like knit it up so yes um I will be working on these more now that I've got these two finished as well as that, I would very much like to pick up my skeel grassware, which I have slightly neglected, which is very sad. Um, however, I have been thinking about it and I'll just get it and show it to you. It's just here. This is where I knit, knit mostly, unless I'm outside. Um, so yeah, I had a few little problems with the fit I decided even though okay so the neck is obviously too wide this is not the final the final is picking up the stitches and doing an i-cord uh, bind off which I love um but the sleeve I didn't do very good decreases on the sleeve so I made it such a rookie error so I decreased every 10 centimeters instead of 10 rows who does that i do that <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna rip this out back to here and start decreasing every 10 rows and i think that will make the sleeves fit better because at the moment they just look like like a straight tube and i kind of wanted it to fit my arm more snugly as well as that, because the neck is wide, I was thinking of picking up the stitches, decreasing and then doing the I-cord bind off, which is, I think, well, I hope it would work. Do you think it would work? Um, I don't fancy trying to unravel this. I think it would be too, too much. I mean, I maybe could, but getting the cast on edge getting past the cast on edge would be really hard and there's like little increases very early on so I think if I picked up the stitches like knit it two together around like knit two together knit five knit two together knit five that would probably give me like a better fitting neckline probably but if you have any tips for that please do let me know so the next projects I'm going to be casting on are maybe another snuggle down coil in my spring colours Um, I definitely also would like to knit some like short socks like trainer socks Um, just cause though I have some that I bought from like a sports shop and they just go into holes in the big toe and I thought well I could try knitting a pair of shorties and see if um see how they wear because I usually wear them when I'm playing badminton and then you're sweating quite a lot and then yeah you're kind of doing loads of lunges as well so like every time you put your foot forward your your feet kind of go like straight like into your shoe and your toe kind of like I think that's why these ones that I bought um have got holes in them so I was thinking of doing that getting be good if I could get like like eight pairs is that too ambitious so I play like three to four times a week so then I'd be washing them every like two weeks because they will get sweaty if you're doing sports in them I'm sure um so yeah I don't have a design for that in my head yet or what pattern I want to use I might just make something up I don't know um but yeah so that is this so I'll probably work in this and um, cast on a trainer sock work on my rate of sock and maybe will I knit a shawl? Well, talking about shawls, you know the shawl that I am designing, um, which is where, which is not there in here. So many bags. This one. Well, I decided that I'm going to rip it out again because I want to knit it in my natural sock and I will keep this yarn for something else. Um, 
why I just think it's more what I'm envisioning and also it'll be easier to make kits from because I won't be getting this limited edition yarn again and I think I'd like to go for a different colour actually I'm not sure which I might even do it my natural sock and then the Wensley deal for like the lace section possibly so yeah this is getting ripped out again <laughs> so I could work in this in theory um for a little bit for a shawl but I don't like having too many whips on the go because then you never make any progress in anything so we'll see I, I'll prepare my colours in the yarn and have a think about that first and then and then have a go at starting that again so other things that I'd like to cast on is um well I always like having a sweater project on the go and my friend Selma keeps knitting ranunculuses, which um, she had them with her last year at the Ullin Knit Retreat. And uh, it was so beautiful. And the way she knitted it was so beautiful. And the colours that she chose were so beautiful. And I decided even back then that I wanted to knit a ranunculus in my Wednesday deal. So I finally got around to dyeing some up um, and I asked on my Instagram stories what colour should I knit my ranunculus. So it was between this and like a sedgy, greeny, grey, yellowy sort of colour and the pink one. The pink, pink is just, it's uh, I don't know. I used to hate pink and now I love it so much since I discovered dusky pink. I can't get enough of it, as you can see. <laughs> um, so the pink one, and I think I will knit the ranunculus in this. So this is the Wednesday deal. So yeah, I'm gonna save a few skeins for that. I'm curious to see what it looks like. This is the sedge green, by the way. This is what it, what I was choosing between. I love them both, so it was hard to pick. Well, I mean, I didn't pick, you picked, but. <laughs> Um, I think this would, I, clearly I like sage green as well. <laughs> so yeah, my two best colours ever. <laughs> um, so yes, I want it to be really light and floaty and airy and something that would be nice and loose that I could wear over the top of dungarees um, in spring, summer. So that is the plan. So I don't know if I'll even get swatched for that. I might get swatched for that. Need to go and buy the pattern first. So yes, I have been dyeing up loads of spring colours, which is very, very fun. I have been bringing back some old colours um, from last year. And it's been really nice. It's been really nice. Um, so this is all for the next shop update on the 30th of April. So yeah, showed you this already. This is what I'm knitting my socks in. Um, this is a new colorway called Iris. Oh, I didn't tidy up these skeins. Um, they'll obviously be tighter than this when they get to you. <laughs> um, Iris. So yes. So this was the first, this is a new colourway. This is the first um, batch of this that I made. The second batch came out kind of different but I also really like it. It's just like a little bit darker and a little bit more grubby. I think I might like it more, I'm not sure. Um, but I have, so I have these. Lot, dye lot one, dye lot two. Um, I brought back from last year, I brought back a uh, Climbing Wisteria. It's got wee orangey speckles. And I have Honeysuckle, which is what what will be in the Tammy Gore Serana Shawl kit that I make sometimes. So yeah, this is another favourite. I've knitted with this colourway and I really like it. 
so yeah um i had a new colorway that i'm kind of loving i think it would make a really great pair of socks so it's this lilac with sort of green spiegels very lightly no name for this yet so if you have if you have a, any suggestions let me know i would imagine it should be something garden related um bluebell this actually kind of reminds me of something that i made for um a club a while ago but i never really write down my recipes for the club so um i can't really exactly remember what i made i think it might have been for one of the kind of just just we pray just we pressed my French is not good. Clubs. Anyway, so there's that. And I have a whole bunch of Cheviot. Um, I'm thinking, would this be the last update with the Cheviot or will the next one be the last update with the Cheviot? Probably the next one. I think I still have enough for one more update after this one. But I am just all over the spring colours. It's so nice. And I love dyeing these colours. It's just like... I much prefer this to like an overly saturated kind of, just find the colours so gentle and they, I love using up exhaust baths so it's perfect for pastels. Like sometimes I get in the mood for more saturated colours but I just love a spring palette, it's just so nice. So yeah, and um, most of these are just like one of the kinds and they'll just be in the shop, you know, like, um, with their one of a kind number on them so um so yeah so that's all so that's all i've got way more than that for the show update but um i didn't want to bring everything downstairs so <laughs> um what cool things have i got to tell you about well, by the time this goes out, the club will probably be sold out. But I, this is the first first month that I've started a yarn mug and tea club, and this month is inspired. Um, it's called an Irish Spring by the Seaside, and uh, the yarn is my natural sock for ply, and the mug is by a local Northern Irish potter. Uh, uh, do I have it here to show you? No, I don't. It's a little handle, this mug, and the colours that she used to glaze it kind of were, they're sort of reminiscent of the seaside and the coastline around here. Um, so I put the first few spots up this morning, they all sold out, so I'm putting up another 10 in about half an hour. So this will take 24 hours to upload because our internet's so bad. So by the time it goes up, we'll probably all be gone. But I'll, I may well do another one, um, seeing as it was quite popular. And I just, basically the whole idea was like, it's like almost like a little holiday in a package. And because um, everything in it's from Northern Ireland, the tea is a Northern Irish tea brand called Suki. And yeah it's just like a little gift of northern ireland from me to you so that was my idea with that and i'm excited about it like i like having like fresh ideas and just kind of i get bored of doing the same thing a lot so i just like changing it up it's quite fun so yeah i might do another one or i might do it seasonally um, winter by the sea, summer by the sea, autumn by the sea could be really, really nice. There's an idea. So yeah, I think that's pretty much me for all my knitting projects. I hope that wasn't too blethery today. Um, so have them on my little sheet to read out to you. <laughs> Few things that I've been doing and listening to that I've liked. Um, I was on the phone to my granny a few weeks ago and we were talking about um, rationing and she can just about remember rationing and she watches this podcast so if she does <laughs> when she watches I'm gonna do a wee shout out hello granny. Um, 
so I was talking to her about that and she was saying about how they had like a ration book and how they would go and get whatever it was they were allowed to get in the shop and um, that was a, that was all they could get but she was saying that they had plenty of their own food and their own animals and sometimes they had a surplus and they were able to give their um, their coupons to their neighbours who didn't have any or who need it some more for some reason um, and I, then I was listening to uh, I think it was BBC Radio 4's Women's Hour and they had Mary Berry on and she was talking a little bit about rationing and everything as well and then she was coming up for all these ideas um, for things to make and um, she was talking about different ways you could like make a Victoria sandwich and what all you could put in it, different ideas. And I was just really thinking about how like sometimes having limits kind of gives way to like a myriad of like creative ideas that maybe you didn't have to ever consider before. And you kind of come up with because you have boundaries in place and you have no choice but to think outside the box. So that was really interesting and I've seen that in a lot of other sort of places as well and um, people kind of just coming up with ideas for how to you know grow their own veg if they didn't have like a, a pot or much of a garden or anything like that and people are yeah there's just people are finding ways to do things like around their homes that they probably wouldn't have even considered before this happened, like when they could go out. Um, I probably should say as well, like as knitters and makers, that's probably a lot of us are probably, that's our natural instinct to want to mend things. Because when you put in the effort of making something, um, then you want to put in the effort to keep it nice and good and wearable. Um, whereas if you buy something maybe from a shop, you don't feel as connected to the object um, and therefore maybe you don't feel as much like you want to take care of, take care of it as much. Um, like when you lose um, the, the maker behind the object or yeah, you probably don't feel as like attached to it and want to like keep it as um, in good condition. And yeah, that, that's been something that I've observed that's quite interesting um, and kind of a feeling of self-sufficiency. People are quite like, they seem to be quite good at that, that I've noticed, people that I've noticed anyway. Um, so yeah, I think when this is all over, um, I don't know it's quite it's a fairly long time it's a few months so people will have time to change their habits myself included obviously and um yeah so I hope that this um kind of attitude is something that I can carry on um after um the lockdown is over um and kind of um step into a little bit more even when things are busier so I think another thing that I'm not going to take for granted is visiting friends and also having time for someone who randomly phones you about some very random thing and not to be too busy to enjoy that phone call. Um, and also I find myself personally kind of rediscovering some, some interests, some old interests like um, stuff that kind of, um, stuff that I used to love and then um, I kind of left it behind for whatever reason or I was too busy to um, enjoy, well, specifically the bicycle, which um, I used to go on a lot of long cycle tours with a friend of mine. And um, I haven't done any long cycles recently. We used to cycle, we cycled one summer from the north to the south of France. And then one summer we cycled, 
we did like a loop around Scotland for like a month and uh, the bicycle it's a great it gives you a great sense of freedom but it's also very I don't think I've ever found it really easy whereas some people I know do find it easy and yeah like I like it sometimes but not all the time <laughs> um and I think about I think it was about three days ago now my husband and myself decided okay let's get the bikes out so we got the bikes out anyway and you know yourself when you don't want to do something you just find all the excuses not to do it oh the tires needs pumped up oh the brakes not working so anyway we went out in the bikes and we were going just down the hill past the house and I was like oh this feels so good just the wind and the sun and just going somewhere a little bit faster than if you're on foot and I really enjoyed it and yeah having this time to just revisit that part of my life uh was really nice because it feels like a long time ago since I did those things it was like not quite 10 years ago but long enough um so it's nice to kind of get back on the bike and remember those big adventures and um all the things that I did and hopefully to not remember cycling as something in the past but something that I can also enjoy now I just have to kind of build up to it a wee bit um and yeah I've been thinking as well about getting the spinning wheel out it's been so long since I've done any proper spinning and I always really enjoy it when I do it's always very meditative and kind of calm and nice so I was thinking about getting the spinning wheel out um so sorry about all these little inserts but I had to keep putting them in because I was rambling and not making any sense in the video when I was actually making it the words weren't coming to me um so basically I just wanted to say um thanks for watching and I hope to be back next week fingers crossed um if not it'll be the week after because I will be prepared for the shop update but fingers crossed next week I'll be back so thanks for watching